This video is sponsored by the AV Summit, an online convention for the AV enthusiast. Happening October 25th to 29th, big changes are coming. Go to theavsummit.com for more info. How's it going? This is Joe Antel. Today, I'm gonna be taking a look at a few different video capture cards for the purposes of streaming. And what I'm using it for is not for game streaming. I'm only using it for stuff like streaming on YouTube, maybe Zoom, Google Meet, things like that. So keep in mind, if you're gonna be using this for gaming, then you may wanna take a look at some of the other channels that focus on some of those higher frame rates and things that might be important to you. For me, it's more about having an accurate image with good colors, good contrast, things like that, and good frame rates. And that's what I'm really looking for. So I'm gonna be comparing a few of them and let's see how they look. So this is recording directly on the Sony a7S III in 4K60. This is using the J5 Create capture card. This is the Avermedia Live Gamer Ultra. This is using the Avermedia UVC device. This one is the EVGA XR1. This is the generic $15 USB capture card that you can get on Amazon. So taking a look at these side by side with the Sony internal recording as the reference, it looks to me that all of them look decently sharp. Let's just look at the generic $15 one on the far right. That obviously is blown out. It looks like the Avermedia Extreme Cap UVC has the most similar colors. This was an auto white balance, so it could have shifted because I do have different lights. But the EVGA is just far too red and too saturated, and the black levels are crushed. So based on this, I like the two Avermedias and the J5 Create. I think this is the quality of video you can expect if you were to stream directly to YouTube or maybe through OBS. Basically anything that doesn't rely only on the UVC driver. All of these have the YUY2 encoding except for the generic card, which only has MJPEG in usable formats. Also, if you're planning on capturing directly to your computer, then this is exactly how it's gonna look. All right, so let's take a look at some of these together. This is the Sony a7S III internal recording for reference. You can see the sharpness and pay attention to the colors. This is the J5 Create, and you can tell the colors shifted slightly. This is streamed from StreamYard. I'm actually just downloading what it has recorded. You can see that there are more artifacts and it's just less sharp because it's 1080p and because it's streaming. So the Aver Media, you can tell that the colors are different from the J5 Create. I'd have to go back and look and see how they look compared to the original. But I do remember that this one had the most accurate colors or most similar to the original. The UVC Extreme cap here has some good sharpness. Again, slight difference in colors. Just to be clear, I think that the change in colors here has more to do with the auto white balance setting on my camera. Now the XR1, I don't know what this is doing to my, my contrast. I think they have the wrong either uh, colors or something, something's going on there. This also has um, what I would call crushed blacks and also the wrong colors. So I think their color space is incorrect. Maybe they're using Rec 601 versus Rec 709. So here we're just taking a look at the side-by-side -side comparison so you can see how the colors and contrast and sharpness all compare to the original footage taken on the Sony a7S III. I want you to keep in mind that this was streamed and downloaded, so it might have to do with the connection quality as well, so I just want you to mainly take a look at the colors because that isn't dependent on the upload speed. And here's a view with all of them, so you can take a look at the colors, contrast, and sharpness. So you may find yourself using a different computer to kind of show uh, you know, something else on that computer. And so this is a test of sharpness. This is the native screen recorder. And you can see what happens when you try to stream it. You lose a lot of the quality, which you'd expect. And so we're seeing how much quality you're actually losing now the J5 Create is probably the one you're most likely to do this with because it has dual HDMI input, so you might be able to switch back and forth. I mean, that's one of the use cases that I thought was interesting. Now switching over to the Avermedia Live Gamer, you can see there that it is sharper. 
this is definitely sharper. This is not in 4K, which would be sharper, but most of the streaming services only go up to 1080p unless you're streaming directly through YouTube, but this is definitely sharper. Same thing with the Extreme Cap UVC, similar colors and similar sharpness. That is one thing that I noticed is that the J5 Crate is just not quite as sharp as these. I mean, you'd be nitpicking and it also depends on your streaming upload speed. Now, here moving the EVJ, you see that what was previously gray turned darker, more black. Uh, similar sharpness, and actually, surprisingly, the best sharpness seems to be this generic $15 USB card. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it does have more contrast, which makes the text pop on this dark background. All right, looking at these, you can tell, of course, the original is the sharpest, followed by the generic capture card looking pretty sharp, but what is the XR1 doing? <laughs> So here are the different devices I have. From most expensive to least expensive, most expensive is this product from J5Create, and I think this is actually pretty awesome. They did send this in for me to review, and so I was interested in this, and I said, hey, you know what? You mind sending it out? And they said, yeah, sure. So the difference between this and the others is this actually can accept two HDMI inputs, which is handy. When I live stream, I typically do one with my camera and then another one using my computer so I can kind of show what's on the screen there. So that comes in very handy and also has HDMI out. Lots of different things. You can choose where the audio is coming from on this and then you can switch to different modes here. And I think this is the one I'm gonna decide to stay with. Next up is this Aver Media Live Gamer Ultra. And I'm not gonna go through all the specs here. There are other videos that go into detail about what these do, what they can and cannot do. This is just for the purposes of seeing the difference when you're live streaming. The thing to know about this is it does support 4K 30, which is nice. It also has the most accurate colors and just overall good video quality. Here we have the Avermedia Extreme Cap UVC. And this is just very simple, has the HDMI on there, and then it has the USB-C on the other end. Um, it just works, there's no fan. Whereas uh, I believe this one, this one does have a fan, which I don't want, you know, I don't, I have a M1 Mac mini and it makes no noise, hardly any noise. <laughs> I've never heard it even spin up, but this has a fan, so I don't want any extra fan noise if I don't need it. This one, I don't remember having a fan and none of these other ones have a fan. But the thing I noticed about this one here is I'm getting about the same quality video as I was on the more expensive one. Of course, you don't get some of the higher resolutions and frame, frame rates, but for most of the streaming that I do, 1080p, 60 is more than enough because it's just for su stuff like StreamYard and um, streaming live streaming on YouTube. So I don't uh, use this for gaming. If you plan on using it for gaming, then you may want to take a look at some other videos. Here we have the EVJ XR1, and this does have some cool features. I don't really care about the lights so much, but um, yeah, this is one option as well. This EVGA XR1 does have some pretty cool features, has some lights and things like that. Doesn't have a fan, but the problem is that the video quality is just not very good on it. And last, we have this very inexpensive uh, capture card. I think you can get these for under 15 bucks, but it's just HDMI there, regular USB, Type A on this side, nothing fancy, and not bad. Not bad for, for the price, for sure. I've used this for a long time. So one thing to note about this is what is recorded actually looks different from what I'm able to monitor on the screen here. And so it's kind of weird that the change in color is there. I think that has to do with the fact that this is not in the standard Rec. 709 that we use here in the US. I think I remember seeing that this was recording in Rec. 601, which is more um, UK standard. So anyway, I think that might have something to do with the reason why there's such a difference in colors. So anyway, that was just a quick video for those of you who are looking for something to stream with using a camera for stuff like Zoom, for StreamYard, YouTube live streaming, things like that. Not for gaming. This is just to compare the differences in how the video comes out uh, if you were to record on the screen, maybe through OBS, versus 
when it has to use the UVC driver, for example, using StreamYard or pretty much any software that doesn't have its own drivers that are made specifically for it to utilize the best possible picture quality from some of these, even though they are capable, sometimes software cannot access that some of those features. So I wanted to see how it looked um, using both settings. So anyway, I hope that was useful to you. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Take care, bye-bye.